Hello. I'd like to talk about our new grant from NIH uh, that was uh, issued from Allergy and Infectious Disease that's looking at T cell activation in ME CFS patients. This is an exciting uh, time because uh, it's a large R01 grant that lasts for five years. What's also exciting about it is that we have a lot of people involved in this at Stanford. Uh, namely, Mark Davis is the co-PI on this grant. He will help tremendously in all the immunology components of this proposal. Uh, we also have Lars Steinmans, who is a full professor in genetics, and his lab has developed a lot of new technology with single cells, uh, including the single cell uh, receptor sequencing and single cell gene expression. Uh, we'll use those uh, in this project. We also have Jose Montoya. Uh, we've been trying to collaborate with Jose for a number of years, and you know, finally we put together a proposal that will allow us to do that. He'll provide uh, ME-CFS uh, patient samples. But we also have other people that are unpaid in this proposal, uh, and namely uh, we have to do uh, HLA sequencing, and we have, are going to do uh, CUR sequencing. CUR is a locus that makes a, pr a protein that's a, a receptor on uh, NK cells, and we know the NK cells are heavily involved in this disease. Uh, there's been very little in the way of, of CUR sequencing. Uh, but uh, we have a group that has, can uh, do that sequencing along with HLA. So uh, we have uh, <coughs> Chun Lin Wang and, uh, and Michael Mandrinos and Marcelo Mina are all experts in HLA uh, and CUR sequencing. Uh, that group has developed a, a high throughput method of very high accuracy sequencing that's now being used commercially and is being used in transplants at Stanford. So it's highly accurate and that's, that's great news uh, and we'll be able to do a good job with that sequencing. Uh, we also have uh, Robert Fair, who's an expert in pathway analysis and he will be working with us to understand uh, what might be activating uh, this locus. In addition to these projects, uh, we will be looking at the uh, possibility of, uh, of infectious diseases. Now, we have already done a number of studies on infectious diseases. Uh, we have looked for particles that are in the blood, and we don't find any pathogens other than uh, organisms that are, that are expected to be there that apparently don't cause any problem. We've also done cell-free DNA by uh, amplifying uh, specific sequences to have a very high sensitive method for all, all the DNA viruses. And we don't find anything unusual in that analysis. So the next step is to do uh, random cell-free DNA sequencing looking for pathogens. Now the reason we want to look for pathogens is that that could be what's activating the T cells. So preliminary data uh, with Mark Davis's lab, have shown that there is T cell activation. We talked about it last year at our symposium. And now we're going to take on a big project looking at that, that we have the funding. So that activation could come from a pathogen. It could also come from autoimmunity. And uh, we would like to try to distinguish those two. And that's why we need the sequencing. And uh, we will try to uh, determine exactly what the T cells are recognizing. And uh, it's also possible, and that's where Robert Fair also comes in, that there's some form of just general activation of the immune system, and it's not very specific in terms of what they recognize. That is also a, a potential possibility. So I hope that this project will uh, really give us some new light in the importance of immunology in this disease. And we're hopefully right at the heart of what may be going on uh, in, in, in patients with uh, MECFS. Thank you.